Good morning. I mean, good afternoon. It's an afternoon. It's 1.46 in the afternoon. My hair looks funny. Huh. Anyway, <laughs> it's been, it's Friday. <laughs> Stanley's here. Lucy is in Stanley's cage. She likes to sleep in Stanley's cage. I don't know if it's just because it's Stanley's cage and she's like saying, I'm going to come in here and you can't. I know it's yours, but it's where I'm going to be. I mean, she's, I didn't, don't lock her in the cage, but she just gets in there and, and naps. It's all, it's a much bigger cage. I mean, hers is plenty big enough for her, but it's not as big as his. But I have a feeling there's some power struggles going on there. Anyway, I slept, had a good night sleep. I woke up at 7.20, which is the latest I think I've woken up in months. And I, I don't remember waking up at all during the night, which is really unusual. So it was a good night's sleep. Um, then of course it started pouring down rain and the temperature has gotten cold. So I guess the seasons are changing and we went on a walk, but it started raining on us while we we're on the walk. I probably could have kept on walking, but came back home. Did about, I don't know, I, I did this big circle and I, I don't know, we might have walked just about as, as much as we normally do. Then I did my rowing, my rowing machine stuff. Done 122,000 meters so far this month. Um, tomorrow is my, I row for three days and I take a day off. I row for three days and take a day off. So um, tomorrow is my day off from rowing. So anyway, it's, it's good exercise. And i um, feeling better, feeling that's probably why I'm sleeping better. Anyway, let me put Stanley out of the room. He's just standing there like he's waiting for me to come tell him to leave. <laughs> it's been a good day, hasn't it, Stanley? It's been a good day. Let's get you outside now. <laughs> you don't want to go outside, do you? You're a good boy, Stanley. You're a good boy. Let's go. Good puppy. Once again, I didn't look up the scripture passage before I sat down. So let's see what we're reading today. This is Friday of week 27. Oh, we're moving to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. So yesterday we're in... First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, so First Peter 1, 20, I already forgot, was it 21 and 22, 22 and 23, probably 22 and 23 because that's starting there, yes, 22 and 23. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. That's the mid sentence. I'm going to keep on. For they look at themselves and not going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act. They will be blessed in their doing. This is the word of the Lord. Stanley Jones was so much, and this is a very Methodist thing, and I don't think it's exclusively Methodist, but the idea of action. You know, Luther was so much about, it's faith that saves us. That he was almost like, don't, you know, he wanted to take, stuff, get rid of James, which talks about your works. To get rid of James from the New Testament, but, but there's, it's not that our works save us, but it works the evidence of our salvation. And of course, Jonah saw people who did works without faith of more close to Christ, closer to Christ than people who have faith but no works. Um, and the, his prime example of that was uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who he witnessed, of course, in India help free India from British rule in a nonviolent way. Here is our reading for today, Love Never Fails. 
We are looking at the question of whether love, agape love, is a practic practicable way to live. The four greatest characters in the New Testament are Jesus, Stephen, Paul, and John. And they all died with love as the last word on their lips, Father, forgive them. Lord, do not let hold this Lord, do not hold this sin against them. All deserted me. May it not be charged against them. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Love produced the four greatest characters that ever lived. And we must include Peter, who in dying said, Crucify my, me feet up and head down. I'm not worthy to die like my Lord. All agape. Now, I think that <laughs> these last words of these people, except for Stephen, which is recorded, that's all legend. Perhaps true, but it's not written. Um, another, Stephen died. Jesus, of course, died and rose again. Stephen died in the book of Acts. He was the first martyr. Um, but Paul's death and John's death are not listed, and Peter's death are not in the Bible. I'm sure you all know that, but I had to act like I knew something. Anyway, here's our continuing our reading. A.A. A. Hunter, writing in Fellowship, tells this story. An American missionary, Merlin Bishop, politely but firmly refused to hand over the keys of an abandoned American university entrusted to his care in China to the Japanese officer demanding them. The Japanese officer said Bishop would be shot unless he did. Three men were selected and lined up, with their rifles aimed at the missionary. He smiled and waited. The officer seemed uncertain, the men uneasy. Then one at a time, they relaxed, lowered their, lowered their rifles, and sheepish. Sheepish grins replaced their looks of grim determination, but one of the soldiers was apparently disgusted with this outcome. For he charged the missionary with a fixed bayonet on the end of his rifle. At the last instant, the missionary dodged, grabbed the soldier and the butt of his rifle, pulling the man toward him. Our glances locked and held for seconds that seemed ages long. Then I smiled down at him, and it was like a spring thaw melting the ice on a frozen river. The hatred vanished, and after a sheepish moment, he smiled back. Then Bishop gave the soldiers tea before they left on their return journey. Love conquered. I have personally faced hostile crowds in India waving black flags, faced them with friendliness and love, and was given one of the black flags to take home as a souvenir. Powerful stuff. What if we use love instead of hatred? Love instead of anger. Love instead of lies. You know, there's just so much opportunity to love in this world. And we blow it so often because we just refuse to believe in love's power. And uh, there's danger in love. I mean, love can get you killed. Got Jesus killed. Got Stephen killed. Got... Um, if the stories are true, Paul and Peter killed. Um, got Martin Luther King killed. Mahatma Gandhi killed. So many people have died because of love, but that's the, that's the story of the cross. And that's the uncomfortable thing about the cross. We don't like to, um, we want the cross to save us, but we don't want the cross to transform us. We don't want to pick up our cross and follow Jesus wherever Jesus wants to go. And sometimes Jesus wants us to go to a place where our human life is, is risked. Now, it doesn't happen very often, but it could happen. Here's our prayer for today. Oh, blessed, blessed God, teach me your weapons of forgiving love. For I see that your way works and nothing else will. But I cling to the old afraid of the new. Teach me to launch out on love and take it as my only attitude. Amen. Here's our affirmation for the day. I forgive everything beforehand as Jesus forgave me beforehand. Jesus is Lord.